Hi, good morning, Dr. Daisy. I'm a third year surgery resident and I'm gonna be answering some of your questions today. So I went on Instagram and I actually did a little poll and asked people to just submit all the questions that they might have about my life as a surgery resident or my life in general or really anything that comes to mind. And so today I'm going to be going through those questions and answering them all. <laughs> What's your favorite part of residency? Ooh, so my favorite part of residency would probably be, I don't know, just how empowering it is, how impactful what I do, I feel like really is. I think I really enjoy, you know, getting to know patients, getting to know their stories and being able to play a role in hopefully giving them a benefit or, or making them better from whatever situation they're coming in with. What did you have to sacrifice while doing residency? Well, I'm still in residency. I'm a third year surgery resident, but I think I've had to sacrifice a lot of things. I've given up a lot of opportunities, not necessarily opportunities, but like different events or spending time with my family or that sort of thing that I, I just haven't been able to do because of the time commitment of residency. It's hard, <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie about that, but I think anything that's worth it is going to be difficult. And residency's not forever, thank the Lord. It's just five years, uh, maybe a little more in some places, but I think that ultimately it will all be worth it, so. Is it anything like Grey's Anatomy? <laughs> I always get this question and the answer is always no. I love Grey's Anatomy, don't get me wrong, I'm a big Grey's Anatomy stan, but it is nothing like Grey's Anatomy. They have way too much free time on Grey's Anatomy and they socialize all the time and it just looks fun what they're doing. Plus they do no charting, that's the biggest, that's the biggest thing that I think is inaccurate. Well no, there's a million things. But they do no charting, like they don't spend hours on end inputting things into the computer like we do. How exhausting is it really? It's exhausting. <laughs> I know it doesn't seem like it because most of the time when I'm posting content are on days when I feel a little more rested or when I'm on vacation or when I'm free, but overall it's exhausting. I wish I could just like go around with a camera and show you guys what I look like on a day-to-day -day basis and kind of how exhausted it can I can get at times. Favorite snack? <laughs> this is a random one. I love hot Cheetos. Hot Cheetos and Takis. Highly don't recommend those if you're, you know, trying to be healthy because they are not healthy at all, but I love them. How many shots of espresso do you add in your coffee? Well, lately I've been drinking cafecitos, which are just like Cuban, it's essentially Cuban like espresso shots with sugar, a lot of sugar. <laughs> so yeah, that's been kind of my thing lately. That's what happens when you move to South Florida. You just start drinking all kinds of strong Cuban coffees. During your undergrad years, was it hard? So I majored in biology and I would say it was difficult in the sense that it was it was harder than high school for sure. But I I didn't feel like it was overwhelmingly hard. Med school was overwhelmingly hard. <laughs> Do you ever feel like quitting? Um, it says, I'm also a first generation Mexican American and I want to go to medical school. There's been times, there's been, you know, there's probably one time I can think of during medical school where I really was just not having a good time <laughs> and I sat there and I called my mom and I was like, why am I doing this? Like, why am I doing this? I could be doing something else and having a good time. I could open up a hair salon. I could be a cosmetologist. I could pursue makeup. There's so many things that I enjoy that I could be doing that are not this stressful. <laughs> That being said, I think it was just a moment in time where I really just felt overwhelmed and I moved past it. And then in residency, there's also been a similar time where I was just not having a good time for various reasons on one rotation and I was thinking about it. I was just thinking about the fact that like, this is very hard, you know, is this something that's really worth pursuing? And I, I don't... I say that not to make any of you doubt my intentions with becoming a surgeon, but just to kind of normalize it. Because I think more people than you think have those feelings, but 
not everyone is willing to openly address it or talk about it and it's okay to have those feelings if you feel like that overall if you feel like that most of the time then yeah i think you should reconsider and maybe pursue a different career and that's okay too but having you know one moment in time over the course of four years where you feel like that i think is totally okay have you ever lost a patient and how did you handle that oof that's hard I have not ever really as a direct result of anything I did, but just, you know, I've been involved in a patient's care and then they pass due to their illness or their disease or the progression of things. And that's been hard. I mean, it's it doesn't ever get any easier, I don't think. And if it gets easy, I think you have a problem because what what are you, what's going on? I think it's just one of those things where... You have to take a moment and address it and address how you feel. That being said, we don't really get time to do that. I I feel that one of the times that was the most impactful was me witnessing a young, I believe seven-year-old pass away in the trauma bay. Like he came in, he was already very, very critical and started doing chest compressions, tried to intubate him, but he pretty much just continued to bleed out and ultimately pass. That was difficult and the most difficult part was that after that I had to go see a consult, a different patient, and I had to leave this experience there and not, you know, let it reflect on my care of the next patient. And oftentimes as as healthcare providers, I think a lot of us have to do that. Most of us have probably had some experience where we've we've had to do something similar and that is very difficult. Do I ever get grossed out? <laughs> Not really, to be honest. I feel like my threshold for being grossed out is just beyond anything nowadays. I mean, there are times where I'm like, okay, that was a bit much, but no, <laughs> not really. What do you do when you're feeling down or negative? When I'm feeling down or negative, I try to, number one, step away from whatever is making me feel down or negative, whether it's, you know, even if it's schoolwork, if it's not schoolwork necessarily, but, you know, residency, if I'm studying and I'm just feeling overwhelmed and, like, you know, very negative about it, I just step away. I go do something completely unrelated. So I will go watch an episode of a TV show, preferably a funny one. I'm really into rom-coms, so I can't. I watch one of those sometimes, or I'll just eat something that I really enjoy eating. There's this amaretto tiramisu from this Italian place that I love. It's so comfort food, but I'll like order that and have that. I'll just do little things that make me feel good, even if it's just you know for a brief moment. I'll do something that makes me feel good, and I feel like. That's life. Life is a series of moments. So if you can manage to take yourself out of a negative situation and try to turn it into something positive, then you'll overall have a better life. How do you keep your sanity? This one is easy, I think. The answer is the gym. <laughs> the gym and, you know, prayers here and there help. <laughs> How has it been having kids in surgery residency? Well, I have one. I have a daughter. She's three. It has been absolutely amazing, and I say that not to downplay how difficult it can be to have a daughter or son throughout this time period, but I've had a particularly amazing experience because I have a lot of help. I have a lot of support. I've always had a very supportive family. My boyfriend has a very supportive family. He's very supportive. We have two nannies, actually, one that helps out during the week and then one that helps out during the weekends, and then the daycare where my daughter goes during the day. They're all just amazing. Like, we totally lucked out, and we have a great, supportive, and amazing kind of system in place. So all I can say is good things. <laughs> Tips for being more confident. I think you just have to truly believe in yourself. That sounds super cheesy, but you have to truly believe in yourself. If you do not believe in yourself, you are not going to convince others that they need to believe in you. And whatever that takes. I'm not saying that you wake up one day and you're like, all right, I 100% believe in myself, but I'm saying that you do little things over time to build your confidence, even if it's just telling yourself 
something that you love about yourself every day, whatever it might be, just build your own confidence so that you can then reflect that onto others. If you are not truly confident, people will see that. What was your favorite surgery and why? I don't really have a favorite surgery, but my one of my best experiences in surgery has been that of doing a cardiac procurement on a young kid. So it was actually quite sad. Uh, they did the walk down to the operating room where the parents were, were at the end. It was just, it was incredibly sad to watch, but also I really felt honored to be a part of that. And then they wheeled the patient back into the operating room. He was donating multiple organs. So I think kidneys, liver, heart. And so I walked in as a second year resident, I saw one of the cardiac surgeons. I was actually there to do the kidney procurement with my attending and I saw one of the cardiac surgeons who I was familiar with. I asked him if he needed some help and he looked at me and was actually like, hey, do you wanna do the procurement? And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> he goes, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and scrub, go ahead and start opening the chest. And so I go to the other side of the bed, I start opening the chest, he comes in, we go through like the entire procurement. Obviously, he's kind of walking me through everything. And I did the entire cardiac procurement. And then we took that heart into the next room. And then I was able to witness and help with um, actually implanting the heart into the recipient. So that was amazing. That was one of my favorite surgical experiences. And I don't think I will ever forget about that. Actually going from one side of it, seeing the family, seeing the brain dead donor, procuring the heart, taking that heart into the next room and then putting it into another patient and watching it start beating. That was just hands down amazing experience. <laughs> Can you pick days off or are they pre-made the one who creates a schedule? This obviously varies depending on what residency you're at, but in our residency, we early on, we had a lot of say in our residency and so we kind of decided that we really wanted to do one weekend on, one weekend off. And so for the most part, uh, the senior resident makes the schedule. So um, for my service, I made the schedule and I basically just printed out a calendar and put specifically what days I was going to be on call, what weekends I was going to be on call. And so I know at least a month ahead of time what days I will be off. Why are ortho residents the coolest? I'm going to take a guess. I think this is an ortho resident that said this. <laughs> did you do any research to help boost your residency application for general surgery? I did actually. So I did research with the transplant surgery department and I actually was able to present that research in Las Vegas. And I think that that helped out a lot. I did other research um, in different areas as well. So I had, I would say at least like five to six research projects that I was able to list on my CV. Are there a lot of egotistical folks in your line of work? <laughs> in surgery? I'm gonna go ahead and say yes to that one. I won't go into detail. How do you deal with patients who are treating you poorly? Uh, that's a good question. I haven't encountered this very much, but the few times that I have, I would just say I, I just listen. I try to listen. I think a lot of times when patients are frustrated and going off on you, it's it's not necessarily towards you. They are maybe just frustrated of the situation. They are frustrated with other people. Sometimes they're frustrated with the communication between different healthcare team members. And so for the most part, I tend to err on the side of just not talking and just letting them say their part and listening and trying to respond in a tactful way. And if, if need be, you know, I'll just say, hey, what can I do to make it better? Is residency harder than medical school? <laughs> I would say yes. I thought medical school was pretty freaking hard and I think residency is, is harder. <laughs> it's difficult in a different way because you're now studying what feels like almost as much as you did in medical school, but also you have a full-time job that requires you working about 80 hours a week, so. Oh, this is not a question, but you were super sweet on my first day as a speech therapy student. Oh my God, that's awesome. I love that. Are all surgery residencies the same length? No, they are not. First of all, general surgery residencies uh, vary because there are programs that are seven years. There are programs that are five years. Really the seven-year programs 
are longer because they have a built-in research period. So if you know that you want to do a very competitive fellowship, you might want to go to one of those programs and you actually have the dedicated two years to go into a lab or into whatever area of research you want to work in and that's all you do. For two years you just do research. Other programs like mine are five years and then there's other surgical subspecialties. So if you go into cardiothoracic surgery in an integrated program where you don't do general surgery first, it's a different length. If you do plastic surgery, it's a different length. If you do orthopedic surgery or neurosurgery, they're all different lengths. What's the hardest year? I'm coming up on finishing my third year of surgery residencies. I'm gonna be starting my fourth year. And I would say the hardest year for me was year two. <laughs> Year one was hard, but it was hard in the way that you kind of just felt a little bit lost a lot of times, but everybody expects you to be lost as a first year. Second year is definitely a transition period. Like you start to feel like you know more, but sometimes it can be a struggle because a lot of people will still view you as like an intern or almost like, you know, you're still a first year. And so it's, it's a transitional period and I think for me that was difficult. Third year gets better because people start to take you a little more seriously uh, as a member of the team. And I don't know, you just feel like your role is more impactful overall. One thing you wish you knew before starting or choosing my specialty. I think I wish I and I don't think there's any way for me to have known this, but I wish I had a better idea of what a big role gender still plays in surgery. I don't think I had any idea. I think I was somehow protected of the real gender roles in surgery because throughout my life, I've known about male and female gender roles, but they've never impacted me that much. I mean, I grew up in a very you know, Mexican households and there are definitely gender roles. However, my parents have always been very supportive of everything that I've done. And even in medical school, as a medical student, I don't think you really get a feel for, you know, the difference between how a male surgeon gets treated and how a female surgeon gets treated. It's not until you start introducing yourself as I'm Dr. So-and-so and I'm going to be participating in your surgery or doing your surgery that you get a little bit of a different response. <laughs> Some of the preconceived notions, you know, people will just look at you and because you look a certain way, because you wear makeup, because you carry yourself a certain way, they will have these assumptions. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm female. But I, I wish I had a better understanding of that and was maybe a little more prepared going in. That being said, I feel fully supported and I feel like things are going well and I'm, you know, every experience that I've had has ultimately taught me something and been beneficial to myself and my development as a professional, but that would have been nice to know. <laughs> Never felt like you were going to crack from the pressure. I mean, there's been times where I felt really overwhelmed. Never in surgery. Like, never in... A surgical case now I do not know I think I have like a little guardian angel with me at all times during surgery but for some reason I never feel super overwhelmed or like I can't continue during a surgery I actually feel the calmest when I'm in the operating room or when I'm operating I don't know I can't explain it but that's just how it is how long does it take to become a surgeon it takes approximately I would say eight years to become a doctor, so four of pre-med, four of medical school, and then general surgery residency is five years. So overall total of 13 years, <laughs> about, it's a long time. How often do you have to take exams? So in residency you have at least one big exam per year. For us it's the ABSIT, which is the American Board of Surgery in Training exam. We take it every year. All five years actually take the same exam, however, you're only graded against your class. So you get a percentile score based on kind of where you fall among your peers. Say if you score in the 50th percentile, that means that you scored higher than 50% of the people who took that exam. It's a little stressful because you're really just getting compared 
with all the people that are in your year <laughs> across the country. Okay, so I think that kind of wraps it up for today. Thank you so much for watching, for sending me these questions. Hopefully I answered them to the best of my abilities. Really appreciate you guys being here and I will be doing more of these in the future. Look out on my Instagram. I'll be posting kind of what questions do you have and I will do my best to answer them all. 